Your liver is the most important organ in your body when it comes to detoxification of harmful substances such as alcohol, pollutants, heavy metals, or even old hormones and neurotransmitters that the body no longer needs. In this video, I want to explain how your liver gets rid of toxins. You will learn about the main phases of detoxification, so phase 1, phase 2, and the lesser known phase 3, why your well-functioning liver is so critical to your health, and how to support natural detoxification with the help of foods and supplements. The first thing you need to understand is that our liver is both a storage site for nutrients as well as the main detoxification organ in the body, next to the kidneys of course. So its most important role is to continuously decide what substances need to be kept in the body and what substances need to be removed. It functions like a massive chemical plant that manufactures certain compounds, detoxifies dangerous substances, and directs nutrients all over the body for use, storage, or excretion. For this, it uses two main pathways, the so-called phase 1 and phase 2 detoxification pathways. There's also sometimes the mention of a phase 3, but we will get to that later. They all work together, and most toxins usually go through all of them before being eliminated. Let me quickly go through each so you understand the basics of liver detox. Let's start with phase 1. What's most important to know is that we're primarily concerned here with the fat-soluble toxins, so those that can bind to and accumulate in the fat tissue. Water-soluble toxins can also create problems, but they're usually peed out and processed by the kidneys, so they don't strain the liver as much. So during phase 1, your liver is particularly watching out or fat soluble toxins. These could come from your GI tract after digestion, for example, or they may be released into your blood from your fat stores. Once your liver picks up a fat soluble toxin, it puts it through phase 1 detoxification. The main role of phase 1 is to break down harmful substances into smaller molecules, just like breaking down food for digestion, and then making these substances water soluble in order to enter phase 2. Both functions are achieved through certain chemical reactions that rely on cytochrome P450 enzymes. If you research liver function and liver detoxification, you will see these P450 enzymes being mentioned a lot. They basically modify fat-soluble toxins through reactions like oxidation, reduction, and hydrolysis. What this does is add or expose a place on the toxin for phase 2 enzymes to interact with. So overall, these chemical reactions are a good thing that you want to happen. But in this process, a lot of free radicals are created. Remember from my video on free radicals that they lead to oxidative stress, which can damage tissue if it goes on unchecked. On top of that, sometimes these intermediate molecules from phase 1 liver detoxification are more dangerous or reactive than the original substances. That's why you want to make sure your body can quickly and efficiently process the intermediate molecules to phase 2, where they are then made less reactive and less dangerous. This then takes us to phase 2. Once phase 1 is done, the toxins in the liver enter phase 2 detoxification. It also consists of certain chemical processes that are called conjugation reactions. Conjugation means to join things together, and this is very fitting. Because phase 2 involves joining products from phase 1 with other molecules. Like I said before, this makes these toxins less reactive and less dangerous. It also makes them more water soluble, so they can be excreted more easily through your urine or bile. There are several important conjugation pathways in phase 2, but the most important ones are sulfation. This is dependent on inorganic sulfate availability and is important in the detoxification of substances such as estrogen, T3 and T4, so the thyroid hormones, as well as melatonin. Glucuronidation, this is a huge detox pathway for prescription drugs, as well as BPA used in many plastic containers. The end products of glucuronidation are usually excreted via your bile. Glutathione conjugation, you probably know glutathione as the master antioxidant in the body. Well, in phase 2 detox, it also helps remove mold toxins, pesticides, and certain heavy metals such as mercury. Amino acid conjugation. Here, certain amino acids attach to toxic substances 
to make them less reactive and more easily to excrete. Usually amino acid conjugation uses glycine, which is why it's often simply called glycination. Acetylation, this pathway helps you eliminate harmful molecules in your diet, cigarette smoke, and even caffeine. That's why the effect of caffeine in a coffee wears off at some point. And methylation. You may know about methylation from the common defect in the MTHFR gene. Because methylation is involved in so many biochemical processes throughout the body, it's no surprise that it is also involved in detoxification. Here it is especially important in clearing histamine, which is why some practitioners, such as Dr. Walsh in the US, use whole blood histamine levels as an indicator of your methylation status instead of genetic testing. Now that we talked about phase 1 and phase 2 liver detoxification, remember that I also mentioned a phase 3. Phase 3 isn't an official detox stage, but many people still use it because it helps us understand what happens after phase 2. Because it is fairly easy to understand, let me quickly go over it. You see, phase 3 is all about transportation. It mainly refers to the transport of phase 2 conjugates, either to your kidneys for further filtration, after which you pee them out, or the toxins will be mixed with your bile, after which they are eliminated with your stool. So this phase focuses on the actual removal of the toxins from your body. Because until they completely leave your body, there is still a chance of reabsorption or interaction with other parts of your body. Great, now that you have a good understanding of the different detox phases, how do you support them? Because remember, all these processes are nutrient dependent. So the question really should be, how do you make sure your liver has the necessary nutrients to perform all its functions properly? This is a tough question to answer because each pathway that I just described has different nutrient requirements. So to keep things simple, here's a general overview of the most important nutrients for each phase. Phase 1 is heavily dependent on the B vitamins, especially B6, while Phase 2 requires certain amino acids such as glycine, cysteine, glutamic acid or methionine. Because Phase 3 is all about bile production, you want to make sure you get enough taurine, which is critical for bile release, and you also want to eat enough fiber to avoid constipation. But like I said before, these are just general recommendations. There are many lists of critical nutrients for each phase online that you can Google. Another important thing to know is that if you want to optimize your detoxification through supplements, please start with the last phase, so Phase 3, then go to Phase 2, and only then take supplements for Phase 1. The reason is that, like I said before, the intermediate substances that occur during detoxification are very harmful and need to be eliminated quickly. If you turn up your phase 1 detox, for example by taking a high dose vitamin B complex, but don't have enough nutrients for phase 2, these harmful substances will stay in your system and cause damage. I made this mistake back when I didn't know anything about detoxification and it can really cause some nasty side effects. As always, please go slowly and work with an experienced practitioner because they can guide you through the process step by step. 